Good morning, this is Mel, or afternoon or evening, wherever you're at. Today we're gonna to take a look at a Yamaha 1200, 1100 crankshaft. It is in pretty poor condition, but I think most of the rod pins are good on it. Some of the bearings are bad, and especially the inner ones. So we're gonna disassemble it, we're gonna go through how you might repair a crankshaft instead of completely having one rebuilt and replaced. So this is for more of the budget-minded person and the homeowner. Maybe this can help you take one apart. I don't know, it's still a little bit complicated, but you might be able to figure it out from what I'm showing you here. So first we're gonna start with removing the, the PTO uh, bearing. So we're gonna take put this clamp on it, take it over to the press and remove that uh, bearing. And then we're gonna do the uh, mag end. That one's easy enough, don't forget to keep the sleeve. And here comes the mag end. And this bearing has seen uh, much better days. It's missing a whole bunch of ball bearings. Now we're gonna remove the mag end counterweight here. And these usually come off pretty easy on the Yamahas. Next up is the PTO side. We got that off. Now we're gonna go prescribing the ends of the crankshaft before we remove the two inner counter balance. So I scribed them with the line and then uh, I'm going to pop them off now and break the weld. I used a real fancy uh, line there. I completely cleaned off the crank, used a paint marker, used a um, parallel, perfectly straight parallel, machinist parallel, and drew one straight line across it so that when I put it back together, I can line that line up and save myself the trouble of phasing it. And so see we've taken both ends off and you can kind of see the line on there that I marked it. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull the rest of the bearings off of it. And the only thing left there, as you can see, is the center connecting rod. And those bearings are trashed also. But the amazing thing is all the pins were good on the crank. None of the pins were bad. And um, we can replace those too, because this crank was an SBT crank, so all the pins are welded in, so you can break the welds and replace them if you need. But a normal, a normal Yamaha, the pins are fabricated in with the counterweights. So we've taken it apart. Now we're just gonna clean it up a little bit with the wire wheel.
So all the rods we ended up replacing with a set of OEMs that I had from cranks I've disassembled in the past that were mint rods with beautiful bearings and stuff. So um, we saved some of them when I'm doing repairs on some of the crankshafts. Uh, so sometimes we're repairing them, other times mostly they're getting rebuilt. But there are some cranks that come in that are very nice looking. So we'll, we'll snag some of the rods and we tear them apart. So we're gonna go ahead and use them on this crankshaft, which I normally, I was going to just replace, uh, wasn't gonna replace any of the rods, but one of the rods turned out to be, have some scoring on it, wasn't any good. So instead of doing a mismatch set with the SBT, I just decided to throw on three OEM rods and bearings on those center, center ones. We're on all the pins actually, so. Anyways, the pins all looked really, really good on this crankshaft. I will be doing a video in the future on connecting rods. We're gonna do, take a look at several different kinds. Uh, SBT, Namura, 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 Namura is making one. Uh, and then you have uh, Sanera, and then you have WSM, and then the OEM rods. We're just gonna take a look at them. I'll do like a comparison video on them. So we got everything polished up here now. I'm just expecting the bearings, uh, taking a look at them with my spectacles on there. Those are three times spectacles so I can see close up on the bearings. And uh, they all look really good. Those are the replacement ones. Two of the three that were, were still really good, two of the SPTs. But, um, anyways, this, this video was originally to do a repair on this crank, which is, this is a repair job. This isn't a rebuild. Rebuild, full rebuild is all new things, and bushings and all new bearings. I think we replaced all the bearings mag and PTO and all the center ones we use uh, uh, these OEM rods and, and bearings on this crankshaft. So I'm just aligning that and tapping that on to get that straightened up. And I take a second look at it and kind of line it up a little bit before I take it to the cross and get it as close as possible. We're going to use a 20,000 spieler gauge here. Uh, between the counterweight and the rod washer. It's 15 to 20 thousandths on that gap. So once they put a little pressure on the 20 thousandths, we can use a color like this. I'm, I'm greasing the bearings right now. Put a little spots of grease in between all the ball bearings on both sides for break-in purposes. You don't get any dry start on them. It doesn't take much heat to get these to uh, expand a little bit. Just gotta remember to put the uh, pinholes in the right position. They go towards the center. That's a 20,000 spacer there too. So you mount the crankshaft in when you got one when you're doing your center, you mount it in on this, I use this old upper case of a 1200 Yamaha and I'll mount the left side in there, or right, it doesn't matter really. And I just like, because I'm right-handed, so this is the way I always mount stuff. So. We'll clamp that on there and then we're gonna true uh, the center before we continue on with the build.
just like to have that napkin underneath there to slide around uh, the crank better. It kind of keeps it from getting any little debris underneath of it. You can see that's pretty far off. That's about 30, 50 thousandths. I'd say that's close to 50 thousandths off. That's way out of there. So, anyways, we're going to see just with a few hits on it. Okay bring it right back into alignment. Couple more taps. That's it. The center's done now. Now we can actually finish it up. So we're going to put the bearings on each side now. Or on the other side, I should say. Uh, first, we're going to weld that so it doesn't move. I'm using a uh, Mixed Metals 220-T TIG rod there. Works real good for Mixed Metals. It's kind of expensive though, it's like 80 bucks a pound. That's Royal Green 220-T. And go ahead and clean up that center spacer. up these two bearings. Those were WSM bearings. Remember the pinholes go towards the spacer. And you can use a 20,000 wheeler gauge before you put the last bearing on. Okay, we're gonna knock all the welds out of the uh, each of the counterweights that are remaining. It's just a round chisel and This is an OEM crankshaft, you, you wouldn't have this problem. I mean, these are OEM cranks, but it's been welded up before by SBT. Checking our alignments. I'm gonna go warm that up a little bit, not much. I'm just trying to change the temperature so that it's hotter than the, the pin, so that it'll, it'll, it'll have a little bit of swell to it as we push down on it. 
and uh, bring it into bring it into position, which is uh, 2.2 .2, about 2.2 to 0.5 to 2.2.10. So it's about this gap in there, so about a 5,000 variance in it. And just take a look at our alignments. When you lay that parallel on there, and you look at that. Uh, line in the center, especially against the parallel, you can tell the gap is like, you know, perfect. It's very easy to line up a phase, a crankshaft like this. You just remember to mark it properly before you disassemble it. Save yourself quite a bit of time using degree wheels and everything. That's it. As long as you don't suspect that the crank has a severe beating. If the rods were like pounded away on it, you know, there's a strong chance that the pounding twisted the crankshaft. So you have to be careful of that. This is more only if the crank is in relatively good condition. Just gonna tap that over a little bit, line that line up. Comes right in the line, it's super close. It's a perfect match right there. I need a lot of light and glasses because I'm half blind. Now we're going to weld it using that Royal 220 T rod again. Always shield your pin when you're welding so that you don't get any spatter hitting your pin. That'll ruin your world as soon as that happens. Though. The pin is bad, so you don't want to do that. You want absolutely zero hitting on the pins. You can check the pins with a, uh, you know, Set of magnifying glasses are good spectacles that are due two or three times, you know, in your view with uh, using a razor blade if you suspect there's a spot. You know, if you feel anything, any kind of tiniest little divot or anything like that or, or pockmark in the pin, then, you know, it's no good. Okay, it's just about there. We're just going to press it on a little bit farther. I'm just taking a look at it before I put it on there. Most of the time when I do these like that, I can get them without even having to tap them. Okay, that one's done and welded. It's all set. We're gonna go ahead and throw the rest of the rods on here. Just taking a second look at the bearings. After I clean them all off, I wanted to look at each one, each bearing individually. Remember, those are used rods. are going to rebuild the crankshaft using these rods you, know, you have to take it all the way apart so that you can check and a lot of guys will just try to do the rod that's obviously bad but uh, if you don't check them all you know you're you're taking a risk because they they can hide the, the pins are what is usually tells the story they'll be pitted on there and you'll pull them apart. You'll spin good, sound good, and quiet. You take it apart, and there's all kinds of pits all over the rod, or the rod pin, I should say. I'm 
tapping it, I'm laying it on the table. What I'm doing is I'm hitting the counterweight down onto the table because it was out of alignment a little bit. And you can hit both sides down on the table and the table is relatively flat. So usually it'll be within 10 or 20 thousandths at the most when you do it like that. That's kind of what I was doing, blocking the view. That's another 20 thousandths peeler gauge. So we're going to do the other end. This is the mag end. Put both of those on before we'll true it. I usually lean it down towards me slightly. I didn't give you a good view of this, and then hit hit the pin, uh, you know, hit it on. And there's no ready to press them on. You got to make sure that the counterweights are parallel. That the counter rates are vertical and parallel to the pin before you start pushing them down. If they're kind of crooked, hit them with a hammer to straighten them up. And this isn't really complicated doing truing and stuff. This is hammering, wedging, and using the vise to squish them. And when they're either high or low, or we're using right here just four positions. I'm using uh, three o'clock and nine o'clock and then 12 o'clock and six o'clock. Uh, very rarely, you know, you'll have to go in and, and use on the angles in between those positions, like at the, you know, say, uh, between like three and uh, you know, six, you know, or whatever. But that is it's super rare. Most of the time you can get no problem just by using those, those two positions. And then you also got to think about when you're hitting the, um, the 12 and the 6 is that uh, if, the six is, if the 6 is low instead of high, then you may have to, if it don't, you can try hitting the crankshaft from the end to try to force the high, the force it up, but a lot of times you have to put them in vice and use a vice to squish it bring it back and put it back in the cases I tack in this this crankshaft in, in three spots this pin before I start welding I tack on each side and I tack in the center and then I weld it because I don't want it to move as you're welding it so you just don't start on one side and start welding across because you, you'll cause it to come way out of whack When it's an open weld like that. Now, if you have bearings on the end and they're clamped in, then you can just go for it. Just a little last truing right here. This side is giving me a little bit of trouble, which is normal. Sometimes I'll put those together and they literally perfect. I mean, it's super rare, but it does happen about every 20 or 30 cranks. I'll put together and I'll, I'll get one, I'll put an end on it. Hit it one time. That one's done. Finally, it's a pain in the butt. Weld.
that thing ain't spinning perfectly smooth, you know, screwed up. <laughs> a lot of people won't even attempt the triples, take a triple apart because the center one, if you don't do the center right, it'll, it, the crank will bind up when you put it, when you clamp it down in the bases. So have really tight spots in it. So anyways, we're gonna heat these a little bit and drop them on. This is the uh, PTO end, brand new one there. So we got a new one for the mag end over there too. And then there's the little sleeve you gotta put on. That doesn't take very much heat right there. That's a couple of seconds at most. Oops, let me get that one on too good. And B. Gotta be real careful when you're heating the center one. If it's got that those plastic cages on the bearing, you will melt them. So you gotta keep that fire right down in the hole. This ones take a little bit more to heat up because it's a big bearing. Gotta make sure you put the uh, pinhole, the, the polished pinhole pointing up. Okay, that's it. That is all done. Nice looking crankshaft there now. Anyways, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you later.